Well, here we are, and uh, it's the final video so far in this playlist where uh, I have gone over the writing process for novels, specifically my process. Uh, maybe you uh, you found something interesting about that process. However, it's been almost two years since I started this playlist because the way I release videos and every Tuesday I rotate through playlists. So there's enough content out there, uh, a variety for you, the viewer. So today. It's going to be all about, from idea to manuscript, my writing process with new steps and uh, quick explanations. Uh, it's going to be a fairly fast video. Uh, I'm not going to go too deep into the techniques because there are literally videos dedicated to it, but I will explain each one with a small little like, hey, hey, uh, this is what it means. So why is that important, though, Thomas? Well, you know, understanding a structured writing process helps uh, demystify the path from initial concept to published work, providing a roadmap for aspiring writers. All right. Knowing where you're going and how you're going is an excellent way to move forward. It, it, it's motivational. But whatever works for you is the right way. Remember, this is only one of many hundreds of thousands of ways. Um, but this is how I this is going to be how I write books. Um, but what is a writing process? Ultimately, it involves multiple stages, including brainstorming, outlining, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. However, you might be a pantsy, you're saying to yourself, uh, but still there might be a brainstorming session where you're thinking and exploring ideas. Uh, some people just sit down and start writing. It happens. So there's nothing wrong with that. Before I go into the list, I like to give uh, four tips and tricks for the brain to think about while we go over stuff. Uh, this is just going to be long of it, no shorts of it. So we're going to get right to it. What is the importance of personalizing writing process? Well, you know, uh, you want to emphasize that, uh, you know, writing is highly, highly personal endeavor. Uh, you know, and the truth of the matter is uh, what works for you is the right choice. However, I, I would also I would also say that, you know. Uh, sometimes we don't know what works for us until we try different things. Even if the first thing we tried uh, seems to be working, uh, it, there should always be room for what I call flexibility in the writing process. Uh, so be adapt, uh, be adaptable. All right, be able to assimilate new process processes into your uh, your structure, your writing process itself. And uh, but while you're doing it, remember, just because someone does it one way doesn't mean it's the way you have to do it. But it doesn't hurt. You know, sometimes I hear people saying they tried the Brandon Sanderson's way. Some people try the Stephen King way. Some people try the Nora Roberts way. Some people try. Right. Like there's so many different ways. And that's one of the reasons I really love doing the uh, the podcast. Because you ultimately hear different authors talking about different things that they do. It's very, it's very rare that somebody is doing identical uh, processes. Anyway, the uh, you know embracing your personal growth over comparison, and this is important because uh, again, uh, if Brandon Sanderson sits down for four hours, right, and writes five hundred words an hour, which is you know two thousand words a day, you don't have to do that. In fact, if you didn't write any words, but you thought about your story every day, that's a that's a win. That's a victory. So the only person you should really be uh, comparing yourself to is you yesterday. Thinking about where you were yesterday. Are you comfortable with where you were yesterday? Are there things you want to change? Are there things you want to challenge? Because we are not these other people. And if we continue as writers to say, well, so-and-so did this and so-and-so did that. We'll never find our own stepping stones. We'll never find our truth, our words, our writer's voice, uh, and we'll be uh, forever descending down the path of uh, incompetence, I say, in the most loving way, because, you know, if we try to write like Stephen King, uh, he's writing on a process that he's molded over years, over decades. All right. Same thing with Brandon Sanderson. Same thing with any writer that's ever been out there, especially successful writers. Uh, new writers who are successful will, and I guarantee it, change and evolve over time because that's just what happens, which is the point of this video is that even my process that I made videos for in the playlist, I have evolved and added steps to it that helped me. All right. Uh, but 
at the end of the day, you want to assess the effectiveness of your writing process. You want to look at it because, uh, you know, that helped me. Right. So it helps other people as well as every year or so. Uh, give, give yourself a sense. Maybe every book after every book, say to yourself, did this writing process. Do I feel it was effective? Do I feel I, I accomplished my goals that I hit my my uh, my milestones where I was supposed to? This is a very important part of the process is you got to be mentally self-aware. You got to take time to step back and analyze. That's how we get better as writers. Okay. Before we get into the uh, the actual list, uh, please subscribe, hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. All right, let's do it. This is 20 steps. Step number one, brainstorm. Okay. Brainstorming is one of my favorite steps in the process. Nothing is off the table. Everything is fair game. Um, this is where I just map down anything on everything. Ideas, thoughts. I might even uh, execute a character uh, in, the, in the brainstorming process, and then that might change overall. Even in the first book, again, I have mapped out my entire saga, another 15 books. But even while I'm working on the books individually, there it's a smaller micro uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, analysis of the story, you know, like I, I get really analytical and I and I pull it together and I go, all right, now we're gonna be in this one moment of this bigger story, and things change. Um, and if it does, I'm okay with it because the way I map out, it's all bullet points. It's all, you know, and I could go back and I could just adjust little tiny things, and it doesn't really affect the overall truth of the narrative. So brainstorming is a lot of fun. And remember, everything you write down doesn't necessarily be everything you have to use. It, it's not like, oh, I wrote this, so now I have to use it. No, you have the power. You are the creative. Step number two, this is where I like to do character arcs. This is probably my second favorite part. Probably why it's number two. Uh, this is where I get to learn who my characters are. What I do is basically I think of a general plot for each character. Maybe one character is going to discover their love of cooking, and I write down the title of the arc, A Love of Cooking. So that's the character arc, A Love of Cooking. And then I kind of summarize and map that arc out. I do this for all my characters, and I allow myself to write as many arcs as I want, uh, as many as I can, or as many as I feel are right for this stage of the game. This process also includes the main plot of the main protagonist or, pro or protagonists. Uh, real quick, I start with the main, main plot uh, and the main character or characters, and I say, what is the narrative of the story itself? And that one actually gets placed into every single one of the 27 plot points. The main plot is a literally influences every single plot point. Then I look at characters and I summarize the idea, the concept. For example, a love of cooking. I'll I literally just summarize. Uh, maybe it's they saw their father was uh, was cooking and it was the way they connected. They had a father daughter kind of relationship. Uh, it was just the barbecue was the family secret and they developed a passion for it and uh, they wanted to continue. Uh, they, they, they basically make their life journey, uh, within the main plot, by the way, this is just a secondary plot. This is a character and they end up having to go away. Uh, so they move far away from their father and this is a way they stay with their father and the love of their father. And maybe this love of cooking also helps, uh, establish something. And the end of it is ultimately it gets them, they get, gets them recognition for something. And, uh, they basically say, well, it's my father, my father. This is, I'm, I'm cooking through the love I have for my father. Right. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll slip that into plot points, but it doesn't necessarily have to be every single plot point. And that's the, that's the fun of character arcs is they could be six, seven, even four plot points. Just make sure you put them into the correct plot point movement. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So that's how I do it. And, you know, again, I might make four or five or six arcs for each character. or just might have different kind of sub arts, especially when you do an epic fantasy. All right. Then what I do is I number three, I do short form outlining. This is when I take the 27 plot point outline and I actually write in the broad strokes of the main plot. And, uh, you know. 
I know I'm really comfortable letting the main plot kind of change as I develop it, but ultimately I put it in there. Uh, and then I start molding the character arc. So again, that's number two is where I summarize those arcs in the main plot. What is the main plot? What are the sub arc? What are the character arcs of each character? And then step three is where I map it out into the 27 uh, plot point outline. Okay. Number four, this is the extended outline, also known as my zero draft. This is where I'm actually mapping out chapters. I do this in three parts, even though it's step four. <laughs> uh, first, I loosely, loosely map out each chapter. I do this by taking the plot point summary of a specific arc, in this case, always the main plot first, and I get that idea onto the page. I make This allows me to make sure the main plot is constantly moving forward. Now, once the main plot is loosely mapped out with just plot points, I mean, uh, uh, bullet points, I don't really go into great detail. I might say, you know, these characters have to meet or this thing has to happen, or maybe I'll write like a paragraph of something that defines what it is. You know, I don't go too crazy with it. But once the main plot is loosely mapped out, I'll go back and I start adding the character arcs into the chapters. A little bit here, a little bit there. For the food love thing, it would be like, make sure that she's cooking with her father. Whatever, right? This means that once the first chapter is finished with this particular part, then I would go to chapter two. When chapter two is finished, then I actually go back to chapter one. And then in chapter one, two, and then I do three. And then I go back and I do one, two, three, and then four. And then I go one, two, three, four, five. And the reason I do this is because as I'm developing this very loose uh, extended outline as a zero draft, I'm constantly adding elements. So stuff is seated and it makes sense. And there's a coherency and a fluidity to the narrative. But by the time I get to the last chapter, that loose extended outline is like three pages long for chapter one and same thing for chapter two and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it starts off where it's like these little chunks of things, like maybe three or four bullet points. But by the time I get to the last chapter, it's this massive thing. Um, but it also helps to realize that sometimes by the time I get to the third act, those chapters are a little faster. You know? Um, but anyway, uh, I will also, for the record, I'll write dialogue and some descriptions during this process to make sure the pacing is flowing right, just uh, visually. Um, but I don't go too crazy with that. All right. I just, it's all about outlining all about those bullet points. Once that's done, I go back and I organize plot points and elements. I do this to make sure that elements are being added to the chapters. Elements are things like characters, world building, terminology, etc. And the plot points are also there within the chapters. This is important for me to visually see it mapped out so I can understand if a plot point is over or under representative or if it's working right. And what this means is I made a video on this, <clears throat> but ultimately I go through each of the extended outlines and I map out if like, let's say it's, you know, Thomas, Oh, Thomas is an element. Thomas appeared in chapter one. Uh, uh, Thomas's sister, uh, Melissa. All right, Melissa. Okay. Uh, she wants to be a barbecue cook. All right. Barbecue cook. That's important. Right. Then the other element I do is I go through each chapter and I go, what, specific outline is being represented here to make sure that I'm hitting all the beats. And then I could look at it. And if you watch the video on it, you'll see like it's outlined in a way that I could visually see what elements are there. And if, an, if the element is presented enough for payoff and earning that process doesn't really take that long. Uh, I just did it for an Epic fantasy novel that I'm working with that has 72 chapters. And uh, basically it took me, I don't know, maybe two weeks to do. And you're like, oh, that's a long time. Yeah, but uh, I just I just kind of read through it. I don't do any editing. I just read through. It's just literally bullet points. And I just map down whenever I see a term, uh, an element or whatever. Um, and also the plot point. It's very, very awesome. All right, number six, adjust what I found. So this is where I will add and subtract where I feel is needed based on my organization of everything. This is a process, but it pays off once I know that all the elements are there and plot points are being presented so they grow. Additionally, now I can clean up and make sure that any plot holes are things that are not being earned. 
or uh, I can say, well, this is being earned and there are no holes. So that's important. It's like if I look at it and I see that some characters are only there maybe a third of the time or not even or 3% of the time, I can say to myself, well, this character is a major character. You know, I, I need to I need to get them into the first act. I need to mention them at least, or I need to start seeding elements about them. Not necessarily I have to give their name out, but, you know, maybe their uh, position or their job or whatever the case may be. So it's important to see things kind of play out visually, even if it's just, you know, a spreadsheet where you just kind of see it. I do recommend watching that video. All right. Now, alpha readers, and you're saying, but alpha readers, listen, like I said, by the time I get to that final chapter and I, I add all the stuff, <clears throat> my zero drafts look like chapters because there's so much information now. It, it, it has built, and I've taken, I've taken what were initially bullet points and I've worked out sort of like scene beats because I'm, I'm ultimately outlining a chapter, but I don't go too crazy into the outline until I reach the last chapter because now I know that I have to go back and see what elements are there and I have to see what plot points are there. But once I add all that, now I can start looking at it and sort of mold it and make sure that scenes make sense and that they're being earned. So what I do is I'll hand this off to my alpha readers. Uh, and they're basically reading an outline that feels like a story because of the way I kind of like the way my zero drafts build. And I'm asking them specifically foundational questions. You know, that I'm making sure they're seeing certain plot elements. I'm making sure that they're understanding character arcs. Uh, is there consistency? Does the world building feel right? Is the pacing okay? Uh, but this is not about the immersion or cleaned up prose or prettiness. Trust me, there's spelling errors. Tenses are all weird sometimes. Uh, but it is a good representation of the foundation. Because in my mind, if the foundation is strong, then you can make it as pretty as you want. But if the foundation is weak, it doesn't matter how pretty you make it in the first, second, or third draft. It won't hold, you know? Ocho, revise the outline. So once I get the notes from the alpha reader, I go back and I work. I rework the zero drafts. I don't rewrite, I rework. And I start adding stuff because I have a huge list of notes and I just start going in and I start... And because everything's bullet pointed and I could see the rhythm of the scenes the way I do it, I know where to add it within the chapter. And it's not all about like fine reading because these are just plot point beats. It's not necessarily the story unfolding. It's plot points, you know, <clears throat> so that really helps. And, and this adjusts the zero drafts. Once that's done, number nine is my literal first draft. This is where I can now take the strong foundational zero drafts that I worked on and start doing the fun work. This is where my writer's voice gets to shine. These are my prose, my immersion, the deeper character thoughts or perspectives, uh, how they process information or reactions to, to things. I add other little elements as well to make a bigger impact. This is where I can start playing a little bit more world building that wasn't necessarily important to the narrative, but world building is important because it's one of the three elements that you should uh, uh, add within your story, right? Um, but this is where I can actually start kind of like, you know, when you're reading a book and he goes, uh, he stepped past the orc, uh, all, you know, he stepped past the orc, uh, their smell, which is known throughout the kingdom to radiate, uh, into the souls of people, uh, and, and is a recognized as a status, uh, among their own people. Like that stuff I add in the first draft. I do not add that stuff in plot points unless, I should say I don't add that in the zero draft unless in the zero draft, knowing that about the arc is plot related because the zero draft is all about plot. But when I'm writing the first draft, I like to kind of like add and like develop and grow stuff, you know, and this is uh, basically when I go from the bullet point style of writing to the actual formatting of the manuscript. So this is where I do uh, the one inch around uh, the 12 point double space uh, times new Roman. Uh, that's where it changes over. <clears throat> Once I finish the first draft, number 10 is I take a break. That's it. I step away from the novel for a week to a month. This lets me kind of, uh, forget every little detail before I go back and do a deep dive and a read through. Uh, keep in mind, this doesn't mean I won't work on another novel. 
When I take a break, it doesn't mean to stop writing. It just means I've got to get my mind away from that draft because I just spent whatever time I did on it. I kind of want to forget some stuff. So when I read it uh, through, I know that I'm not fully discovering it, you know, because I I still have a deep seated uh, understanding of the world and the story, as you should. Uh, But I don't remember everything I was working on. So it's nice to take that break. Which means I go back and I read through and I do my personal notes. This is when I got I get to take the first draft. I read it. I take major notes. <clears throat> I'm not looking for spelling errors. I'm not looking for line edits. I'm not looking. I'm not looking for anything that matters when it comes to the final publishing draft. What I'm looking for is the character voices. Are they maintaining it? Uh, the movement of the of the chapters. Do I like the way it flows? Uh, do I did I diverge too much um, <clears throat> from the movement uh, of passages uh, into just descriptions and you know world building for world building sake? Or does it have purpose? These are the things I'm looking for when I am taking my own personal notes. I might also also. Uh, <clears throat> check passage movement so sometimes when you're writing a pro they'll be really long and you realize oh i could break this up and there are rules to that basically if the pov changes or if the movement within the passage changes what that basically means is uh movement changing is uh if it goes thomas entered the uh the building uh you know as i as i caught uh the paintings around the wall uh stab uh, but there was something uh, about the furthest one that reminded him of his mother. <clears throat> and then in, in the same passage, if I have him go over to the painting, that technically is new movement. So the first one, is, the first movement is establishment and the acknowledgement of the setting. The second movement in that longer passage should actually be its own passage because now the movement is the examination of a specific painting. So that's that's important to look for. Uh, that I take note in my personal my personal notes, which leads me to number 12, second draft. I take all my notes and I go through and I start cleaning up what I have written and where I noted what needs to be adjusted. This is also where I might find myself adding, subtracting, and even moving things around, such as breaking chapters up, moving chapters, etc., cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> But I will not do a full rewrite because if I do a full rewrite, I feel the process starts over. Number 13, now after the second draft is done, I give it to beta readers because I'm looking, again, not for a line. I don't do line editing. <clears throat> I don't do copy editing. I'm not, <clears throat> I don't need it to look pretty for the beta readers because I know the beta readers are going to give me uh, feedback. And the one thing I'm looking for from my beta readers is their experience with the story, not the plot. Alpha readers handle the plot. They make sure the foundation is good. This is all story experience this is where i'm looking for their personal experience on the manuscript are they enjoying it do they like the characters do they feel like they're being pulled out of the story at any time do uh are they excited about the story you know it doesn't make them think about certain things this is this is a very important stage uh but they will give me notes And that leads to my third draft. And this is where I take the notes of the beta reader and I clean up and adjust what I need to and what I feel is uh, is valid. Because if you've seen my videos on beta readers, there is a process to that as well. But I might end up uh, rewriting a new chapter if needed scenes or even taking stuff out in the third draft. And the reason is because sometimes the beta readers might be like, "Uh, this character came in out of nowhere. You know, uh, or I would like to know more about this character. You know, this this character stronger. This is a strong character, but I, I think they need a little bit more depth. And you go, you know what? I could add a scene or something like that. Or they might say, you know, this character takes up too much. Like this character was like overpowering uh, the chapter or the scene. And they're not really a major character. And you might want to kind of like tone that down. You might. But again, it, you're the creator, so you can do whatever you want. So after my third draft, I do what I call the big read. This is when I have my closest friends uh, and trusted allies in the writing community uh, who both understand narrative structure and who love reading the genre as well. That's very important. And then we sort of have like a book club experience. Uh, We all read the book. 
except for me, because I at this point I've already read the book a million times. Uh, <clears throat> they read the book, and then we sort of like have like a nice group discussion about it. Like it's a it's a big read. All right, and this leads me to number sixteen, which is technically optional. That's why it's one more revision or not. After the big read, we I you know this is where I do revisions if there are enough notes f to merit it, but usually there are no major overhauls at this point. It might be simple things like. You know, they don't like a character's name. And again, with the big read, these are people that I like trust with my life when it comes to reading, uh, writing and all this other stuff. These are people I mentored or grew up with or whatever the case may be. So if they're like, what are you doing with this name? <laughs> and I'm like, what is it? His name is Unintat. <laughs> and they're like, no, no, it is not Unintat. Get rid of Unintat. Right. And, or they'd be like, Daryl, really? You have all these fantastic names and then Daryl's in the story. And you're like, eh, well, yeah. right. Um, so those are like the little things. But uh, usually there is after the big read. Honestly, I haven't had a situation where I need to do uh, revisions or as I would pay, you know, something crazy. So that leads me to 17. Not my favorite, but literally one of the most important is uh, line editing. This is uh there are no revisions anymore. This is I'm I'm done with revisions. Line editing is where you go through uh, uh hopefully you hire somebody or you know if you feel like you can do it you've saved the money but uh, it's we all make choices. Uh this is where a line editor goes up and they clean up lines in the novel and uh clarity and smooth things out, maybe shrink stuff. All right? Which then once that's done copy editor and this is somebody that goes through and they fix spelling errors they fix uh you know like let's say you write gray g-r-a-e uh, g-r-a-y i mean and then somewhere else you write g-r-e-y they'll point that out if you're using more of an american uh lexicon and there's uh eel english lexicon slipped in there unless it's dialogue of course um you want to make sure there's consistency with the choice that way um the to make sure the tenses are all fluid and, and all the same tenses. Uh, but additionally, with the copy editor, they might also make sure, you know, spelling word, you're, you're spelling all the names right and stuff like that, okay? Last two. 19 is the manuscript format, okay? This is time to organize the manuscript. This has different options. Either I'm going to self-publish, at, at which point I will format my novel uh, personally, because I do that professionally uh i will format my novel uh uh i recommend hiring someone if you don't have the tools or skills to do this but if i submit for a traditional publishing i won't organize my own novel i will just set up and make sure the manuscript is formatted for their submission requirements and again when i'm writing the first draft i'm already writing in uh publishing standards which is the double space 12 uh 12 font uh, of uh, Times New Roman or uh, Germant. I'll do Germant sometimes. Um, and then, uh, yeah, double spaces with the one inch margins on each side. So, <clears throat> and of course, like, I'll make sure that I have the header and the footer correct, and I'll make sure that the number count is correct on the pages, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so, really, it depends if I'm self publishing or submitting. And then finally, artwork. This is where uh, if you're self-publishing, then hire someone to do the cover and character artwork. Uh, if you're going traditional publishing, uh, they will hire that person for you usually. And it costs you money in the end, but whatever. Uh, so there you go. Those are my 12 steps. Question, what part of the writing process do you find most challenging and why? And what strategies have you found helpful? Let us know in the comments below. If you like these videos and you want to continue to support the channel, uh, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. Uh, if you haven't noticed already, there is merchandise available. Uh, you know, you can support the channel by uh, by buying some merchandise, etc., etc. I'm not sure if when this video gets released, if I have the membership uh, going strong yet, but I do have the membership option, which will be out there and it'll be everything from some smaller things to bigger things like classes and uh discounts on uh, my services so my final thoughts on the process is that remember writing is a deeply personal journey each writer's path is unique marked by individual challenges success and learning curves 
You want to embrace the process that works for you and recognize that it is a reflection of your own creative rhythm, not a measure against anyone else's success. Understand that your writing process is not stagnant. It should evolve as you do. As you grow in your craft, your needs, preferences, and skills Everything will change, and so too should your approach to writing. Be open to this evolution and allow it to guide you to more effective and fulfilling practices. Writing can be as challenging as it is when it comes to being rewarded for these advances in your style of writing and your process. But practicing self-compassion and patience is crucial as well. Some days you might uh, find yourself exceeding your own expectations, while on other days, your writing may feel laborious. Uh, but both are part of the process, and both offer valuable opportunities for growth. Use the idea of comparing yourself only to who you were yesterday as a benchmark for progress, because this mindset encourages continual growth and helps keep the inevitable frustrations of writing in perspective. Celebrate small victories and learn from setbacks. There is no such thing as failure, only failure to learn. So incorporate feedback wisely and be willing to adapt. Feedback from readers, editors, or writing peers is invaluable, but it is most effective when used to refine a process that already feels true to your personal writing style and goals. So adapt suggestions in ways that enhance rather than dilute your unique voice and method because ultimately you'll know you found or are close to finding your ideal writing process when writing feels more like a flow than a struggle when you look forward to your writing sessions and when you see consistent improvement in the quality of your work if your current process regularly brings frustration or blocks uh when it comes to writing blocks consider what changes might bring joy and productivity to you but ultimately, stay engaged with the broader writing community to learn about different processes and techniques. Workshops, of course, writing groups, and books on writing can offer insights and inspire changes that might suit your evolving needs. In the end, though, you always want to explore, adjust, and write. With each word, sentence, and draft, you are not just creating stories, but also forging your path as a writer. Each step, no matter how small, is part of your writing journey toward mastering your craft. All right. Next video in this series. So for now, this is the final video in the series on the steps to writing a novel as I develop as an author, of course, and continue to learn as we should. Uh, uh, I will come back and do more videos in this playlist. Uh, but, you know, this playlist already has, what, 14 videos. Uh, this one included is 14. Uh, so, you know, uh, it goes over each individual step. However, I might make more videos that go over the uh, additional steps that I went over in this video. But ultimately, I hope you enjoyed this list, uh, this playlist, and uh, you know, it has helped you on your writer's journey. With that, as always, peace and harmony, truth and action, and keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Bye. Love you.